to be quite saddening if you sing like this here and then you end up singing in hell. What a, what, what a shame. And so please, I want to request that as much as lies within our control, as much as lies within our control, let's try to live right. Today I'm going to be talking about some very sensitive things. I'm going to be talking about the two available things to man. I just pray that God will give me time. And I trust the Lord that God is going to bless your heart. Spirit of the Lord, you know I have nothing to say. I have come to depend on you. And so I lend you my lips, my heart, my spirit, my soul and my body. And I ask that you will minister through me. Let no one leave this place the same way they came. But let your word drop, O King of Glory, the word that will drop in the heart of your people, yield a hundredfold that which they have received in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the total transformation of man. Thank you for the awakening in the spirit of man. Thank you for the miracle that will be birthed through this meeting. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I want to speak to us on what I title Cultivating Your Time. The first day we did talked about cultivating every opportunity you have. And the second week we did talked about cultivating yourself. Cultivating what? Yourself. And when we're talking about cultivating yourself, we say that every knowledge you have is a product. Is what? Is a product. We did say that, how many of us were in church on Wednesday? We missed out. Some of us when, who couldn't come to church on Wednesday, we missed out. Every knowledge God gives to you is a product. Every talent you have is what? Is a product. Learn to market it. Learn to do what? Every skill you have is a product. Every ability you have that makes you different from another person is what? Is a product. And it is in those products that your increase in life lies. It is what? In those products that your increase in life lies. And today we're going to be looking at another sensitive thing. Cultivating your time. I want to start by defining what time is. But before we, we looked at that, can we look at those two scriptures? Ephesians chapter number 5 from verse number 14 to 18. And Colossians chapter number 4 and verse number 5. For the light things, so for the light makes everything visible. The light does what? The light makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Awake, O sleeper, rise up from your death, and Christ will give you light. Christ will do what? So be careful how you live. Be careful how you do what? Be careful how you do what? Be careful how you live. This is how we've been sounding into our ears every service days. For those of us who are ready for change, it's your business. For those of us who are not ready for change, it's still your business. The Lord told me when we were in Mirage Hotels, he said, my son, you can't force anybody to live a life. Your own is, keep saying it. Keep speaking into their ears. For by so doing, you create a platform for their judgment. And by so doing, you excuse yourself of their blood. And I stood on the pulpit and I shared this with us. That was when we were in Mirage. And if you notice, very, very rare before, if I, in fact, if I don't have the leading to call you and talk to you about some things I noticed about you, I won't even talk about it. But for me to preach, I will keep saying it and I'll keep showing you from the scripture. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Take advantage of what? Every opportunity you have. Cultivate every opportunity you have. I'm sure we talked about that. Am I right? Good. Don't act 
what? Toplessly. Don't forget that you don't have control over time. Don't forget that you don't have control over the coming of Christ. Don't forget that you don't have control over the reward that you will inherit that, that will come to you at the end of the day on the day of judgment. Don't forget that you don't have control of when you're going to die and when how long you're going to live. Don't ever forget that. Don't live your life thoughtlessly. Don't be careless. The worst thing that can ever happen to any man is to live his life thoughtlessly. Because that person you're seeing there is a disaster going somewhere to happen. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? Whoever lives his life thoughtlessly is a disaster going somewhere to happen. I sat down yesterday in, my, in, in the night. Everybody had gone to sleep. And I was communing with the Lord. I was just singing. And a thought came to me. And I said, how will it sound that me that everybody is looking to will be heard that I was involved in adultery or fornication. I'm, God in heaven bears me witness. I'm not saying this because of anything. I'm saying it happens to me yesterday. And I said so many people will be, will be disappointed. So many people will be what? Will be disappointed. I was just thinking about it. I was deep, deep thoughts in my heart. And I said to myself, wisdom, this is one thing you must never do. This is what? One thing you must never do. Another thought comes. He said, but you're teaching people. How will it sound in the ears of others when they hear that the same thing you've been ringing in the ears of others? <laughs> you fall a prey of the same thing. And I, I saw the disaster. Can you, can you imagine how you, you while you're thinking, you can see the literal picture of what would have happened. And I cautioned myself. I did what? I cautioned myself. And I cautioned myself. Praise the Lord. If, if you're not thoughtful, then you are a moving disaster. Waiting to do what? Waiting to happen. If you're not thoughtful, you're a moving disaster. Waiting to happen. Praise the Lord. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. The next verse. Who is there? Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Don't be drunk with wine because it to do what? I have never seen one drunkard become anything in life. When I, I, read, when I read this scripture last night in King James Version, the way King James Version puts it is that wine carry excess of what the Holy Spirit gives. Can we see it in King James Version? Look at it here. Now have you seen? Don't be drunk, drunk in, in wine, wine comma, for in wine there is excess. <laughs> have you seen it there? Have you seen it there? Wine carries excess. Go for the Holy Spirit. The prescribed quantity of drunkenness that you desire is found where? In the Holy Spirit. What you find in wine is what? Excess. So I sat down and I meditated on this scripture. I meditated on this scripture so deep. I now realize that every time I take a sip of wine, I'm taking what? Excess. And the excess of everything is a disease. The excess of everything is what? That is why the same Bible verse, verse in a different translation, New, New Living Bible says for it to ruin it will ruin, it will ruin, it will ruin your life. The excess part of it ruins. But the recommended quantity by the Holy Ghost perfects, perfects, perfects your life. The excess does what? Ruin your life. Ruin your life. 
my father would have still been alive today if he was not given to wine. He got to a point we thought we could save him. At a certain, at a very tender age, he started shaking. When he wants to carry food to the mouth, the hand will shake that. He will take it and rub on the nose and take it to the eye. The effect of ethanol in alcohol. The effect of what? Ethanol in what? In alcohol. These are, these are scientific terms. So some of us will not waste the scientific incline. Amen. Ethanol in what? In alcohol. And the medical people said he had Parkinson. And I didn't call it Parkinson. I said my father had Pakistan. Praise the Lord. They said it was Parkinson's disease. Yes. You know what? They said that each and every time he takes that alcohol, the alcohol were fighting his nerves. They were killing it gradually. They were destroying it gradually. Preparing him for being useless at the end of the day. Every time he was taking it, he was consciously destroying himself because he didn't know that the intent of that thing were working against him and they were fighting his nerves, weakening every ability they had to perform. Waiting for the day it will come into full bloom for him to begin to experience the effect of his enjoyment. Hallelujah. Be not drunk with wine. For in it, for in it, for in it, for in wine is what? Where in? Where in? For in wine, there is what you're taking there is excess. Where in? The English word there is what? Where in? Where in? Where in? Inside that wine is what? Excess. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But be filled with the Holy Spirit. The next verse. That's the last verse. Give me King James in um, verse 17. 17 in King James. There's something I'm looking for. Okay. Take me back to verse go back okay we stop at 18 give me Colossians chapter 4 Colossians chapter 4 verse 5 hallelujah praise the Lord Walk in what? Touch. Paul says, pray for us, for not all men have. Listen to me, it's not all believers that are. So, walk with people with what? It is not all Christians that are. Walk with them with redeeming, 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 redeeming. Redeeming the time. Now look at it here. God bless you. This is what I was looking for. And so when I couldn't find it, I was, I was disturbed. Because I know when I was studying last night, I saw this scripture. Redeeming what? The time because the days are evil. And so we want to talk on cultivating your time. Why? Because the days are the days are the days are evil. If you do not cultivate your time, you will suffer frustration. What is time? Time is the inevitable progression into the future with the passing away of the present events into the past. Time is the inevitable progression. You don't have control about, of it. It is the inevitable what? Progression.
transgression into what? Please come, sir. I am time. This is man. Watch this. This man is not prepared to move forward. What does time do? He pushes him. Inevitably, he pushes him into the future. And so when, he, when time pushes you into the future, when you are not prepared, what is that? Say disaster. That's what is happening to some of us. Not preparing for the future, but being taken into the future by time. Are we together here? Not preparing for the future, but being taken by force into the future by, by time. Time is the inevitable progression into the future with the passing away of the present event. But adventure, your present event is that you're going for fashion. What time does is that a time is coming, time will take away that presence and push you into the future which when you were focusing your attention was in the fashion not in your future so time says I will take you into the future and the fashion will pass by the time the fashion is passed away and then you are in the future not prepared what will happen disaster so the best thing to do is to live today to put you know to fix tomorrow Live today to fix today. Am I talking to you? Living today to secure. Living today to secure tomorrow. We are all travelers in time. We all bought a vehicle called what? Time. Every one of us are in a car. And the name of the car is called time. He's driving us. Some of us, we don't even know that the destination to which he's driving us. The reason is because we don't have the compass. We have no goals, no dreams, no plans, no purpose, no intention for living. Yet, we're in a vehicle that is taking us to a destination. We have the, we have the power to determine the destination by our goals. We have the power to determine the destination by our dreams. We have the power to determine the destination by our, our plans. But when there are no plans, no goals, no dreams, no intentions, yet you bought a vehicle. Excuse me, sir. Where are you going? Do you know? Do you know? So, wherever the, the, the journey takes you to, will you question it? You will surely complain, but you can't change anything. Because you had an opportunity to have effected direction, but you never did so. Are we together? Praise God. Do you understand what I'm showing you now? Do you understand what I'm showing you now? Please take me back there. I'm not done, sir. I'm still going to run. Praise the Lord. And what we do while on board, this vehicle determines what stays with us and what goes away from us. What we do. Have you traveled? We know we've been traveling. When you travel, you enter a vehicle in Calabar. When it passes, when it, the vehicle moves, what happens? You notice that things are coming in the, in the front. The ones that come close. Phew. Am I communicating to you? So, Every one of us born in the vehicle of life. What we do while on board will determine what will pass away and what stays with us. Because some of us will have to ask the vehicle to pause while you buy chin chin. Sorry, I talked about chin chin because I like chin chin plenty, plenty. I woke up this morning when I was taking my bath. I suddenly remember that somebody has booked for chin chin for me. And I said to myself, Kai, have that savings today. So I began to imagine the quantity. In the bathroom, I was imagining the quantity of the chin chin. Will it be plenty? Will it be? I said, no, I will look at that with the eyes of the pastor and influence the quantity. Praise God. These are things that happens 
uncontrollably when you don't when you don't think about it you don't plan thought runs to mind and when you don't have the power to check what kind of thought runs in your mind you end up either destroying yourself or ruining your life i say in the bathroom when i'm supposed to think of how i'm going to preach i was thinking of changing praise god so some of us will have to pass on the road to buy chinchin. So what happens to the chinchin? He stays with you on the journey. True or false? But those ones you didn't stop by to buy. And some of us will even buy banana. And then as we're eating it, we're dropping the pills. The banana stays with you here, but the pills. This is life. This is what? This is life. This is what? This is life. Yesterday, you were glowing, shining and sparkling. And today, you check your life. That, that lustre is not as sparkling as it used to be. You know what? When you had an opportunity to have fixed what could have maintained the sparkling, you ignore it. And now time has taken it back. It's passed away. And you're face to face with reality. The sparkling is not there anymore. It doesn't stay with you because you didn't do anything to make sure that it stays with you. Are you listening to me? Tell your neighbor, cultivate your time. Cultivate your time. Are you learning something, sir? There's no need joking with life. There's no need playing with life. Sir, the things I know today, if I had known them back then, I believe I would have been better than today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. Let's move to the next slide. Point number two. What is time? People will have to adjust this. Uh, this when I'm, the time I'm talking about, the other way affecting us. So we have to adjusted <laughs> so I said you, you you're the elder in this house you have the right to adjust the time and nobody will question you so please do something about it I'm begging you this time eh, is challenging praise God now number two time is the quantity of available duration every one of us have a quantity of an available duration we have a time span. We have what? A time span. There is a time span for washing of plates. There is a time span to eat. There is a time span to even be in the toilet. There is a time span to sleep. When you sleep, when you sleep more than you ought to sleep, you turn it, you go into poverty. You go into recession. When you sleep when you ought to walk, you're inviting poverty. You're inviting recession. Am I talking to you? Every one of us have 24 hours. But what we do with them determines the increase we experience. Determines how far we go in life. Determines the differences between us. Am I talking to you? Every one of us have 60 minutes. But what we do with that 60 minutes determines what we take home at the end of the day. Every one of us have 60 seconds. But what we do with our 60 seconds determines how we smile at the end of the day and how sorrowful we are at the end of the day. Did you hear what I just said to you? Did you hear what I said to you? We have equal time. It's a duration. It's a quantity of available. It is what? It is available. It's actually what? It's actually what? Available. It's actually available. It's available. The existence of the earth is anchored on what? The existence of this earth is anchored on what? Genesis chapter number 1 verse 1. In the beginning, the word beginning speaks of what? Time. God created the earth with time at heart. He created the earth with what? With time at heart. In Genesis chapter number 8 verse number 22 so long as this earth remains seed time and harvest winter 
Did you see that? If the earth must remain, so long as this earth, the word while the earth remaining means so long, is that as long as this earth remains, am I communicating? What happens? Seed times and harvest, cold and heat, those are durations, those are seasons, those are time periods. Am I talking to you? So the earth is anchored on what? On time. And so if you're careless with the use of your own, then you don't want to remain. Because if the remains of the earth is anchored on time, the sustenance of the earth is anchored on time, then the sustenance of man is anchored on time. How am I talking to you? The sustenance of the achievement of man is anchored on what? On time. The sustenance of the lifting of man is anchored on time. Everything about man is anchored on time. That's why when somebody dies, you see 1960 dash. They summarize his entire existence in time. Oh, geez, I wish you understand me. Have you been sitting on, in tombstones? The entire existence of a whole person is summarized in what? In time. In other words, what they were simple, what they are simply saying is that your life was anchored on time. You came to fulfill time. You came to do what? Fulfill time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, are we learning something? Hallelujah. Let's get back to the slide. The quality of a man's existence is a function of his respect for time. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? The quality of a man's existence the quality of a man's existence, the quality of a man's existence is a function of his respect for time. When I say man, I'm referring to male and female. The quality of our existence is a function of our respect for time. The quality, the quality, the quality, the quality of our life, the quality of our existence is a function, is a function of our respect for time. You know, as they used to say, time is money. Time is not just money. Time is life. Time is an investment. Time is a trust. Time is a gift. Oh, glory be to Jesus. As a matter of fact, success or failure in life is a function of how we utilize what? Time. Success or failure in life is a function of how we utilize time. The speed of our progress in life is also tied to this principle. It's tied to how we utilize time. The speed of our progress in life is tied to how we utilize time. It's tied to one principle. That's when I called for a meeting. I said, church council, we're meeting by 4 o'clock. And then you sluggishly walk in by 4, 4.30, 4.55. Instead of, I'll be vibrating because you don't know what you're doing. Because in the same ship, your actions is affecting me. Do you understand the point now? Because we're in the same body, the same group, in the same team, your action, directly or indirectly, is doing what? Is doing what? Eda? Is affecting me. So, because I don't like people who don't have respect for time, because such people have no way to go in life. When you drag me unconsciously into it, you kill me. That's why some of us, you know, say, I give me an appointment by 2 o'clock. By dot 2, I'm calling you. Sir, we agreed to meet by 2. What's going on? Some of us who know me, whenever I want to talk to you, I said, I want to see you tomorrow. 
He said, okay, in the afternoon. I said, sorry, sir, with due respect, in the afternoon, what time? And in most cases, I'll tell you, give me time so that I will adjust my own calendar to fit into your own. Do you know why? Because I don't want to, I don't want you to pull me down, neither do I want to pull you down. The reason is because if you messed up with my time, you've messed up with my life. Did you hear that? Anyone who messes up with your time messes up with what? Your life. If God you in this place and tell you stories we are messing up with your time and you have no reasons to come here. Am I talking to you? But if we gather you here and tell you the truth, then you deserve to come back the next day. That's why you need to go out to the street and tell people, come, there's a place that they can tell you the truth. Am I talking to you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything in life, everything in life owes its existence to what? Everything in life owes what? Its existence to time. Everything in life owes its existence to time. That's why, have you read it in the, in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1? To everything there is what? A season and a time for every matter or purpose on that world. And then you, if you go there and start listening, a time to wake up, a time to sleep. A time to die, a time to burn. A time to eat, a time to wash hands. A time to pack the plate, a time. If you start packing the plate when you have not started eating, <laughs> somebody will look at you and say, this man, something is wrong with his head. You just brought the food. You've not washed your hand and you're packing the plate. Where are you going? I want to go and wash the plate. With the food inside? I thought you came to eat. Do you know why, why people will think something is wrong with you? Because you have abused the placement of time. Do you understand this thing? When you see a madman misbehave or behave, what you simply see and call madness is the abuse of time. Am I talking to you? It's the abuse of time. They do things that makes you feel insane. It's not correct. Abuse of time. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Point number three. Time is a unit of measurement of progress. It's a unit of what? Measurement of progress, duration, and tenacity. Time is a unit of measurement of progress, duration, and tenacity. Every achievement in life is measured by time. Every achievement in life is measured by time. Every achievement in life is measured by time. Take me to the next thing. Please, you can quote these scriptures. Have you written all? You can see them. They will give you the notes. Praise the Lord. Or maybe you collect this one and photocopy. And then they will give it to you. I realize that David, David Abuehme does this in every of his service. And at the end of the week, he gathered them and produced a book. So I said to myself, I need to be doing this too. Maybe at the end of the year, we'll pack everything and produce a book. We call it, um, what do you call it? A due season for divine harvest. So a due season for increase. And then you buy the book. Cultivate. Cultivate yourself. Cultivate yourself, bros. I can't be teaching you and be foolish. No, but that's the truth now. No, I can't be teaching you and be foolish. Praise the Lord. Man's existence on earth is measured by time. The strength of our relationship with God, our wives and husbands, our children, friends and relatives is measured by the amount of time we spend with each of them on the best. The strength of our relationship is measured by the time we spend with each other. The amount of time you spend with God the amount of time we spend, you spend with your wife. The amount of time you spend with your husband. The amount of time you spend with your children. The amount of time you spend with your relatives is what determines the strength of your relationship. Am I talking to you? My son in the Lord sent me a text and I stumbled on the, he sent the text around 11 o'clock and I stumbled on the text around 12 o'clock and I put up the phone to call him. He has switched off his phone and I sent a text to him back. 
I just wanted him to know that I'm by you. I'm just there. You're getting the point. I am there. And because I'm by your side, you can't go down. Nothing can bring you down. That's the strength of our relationship. The time we spend together. Praise the Lord. What did I say? The strength of a relationship is measured by what? By time. Seasons are measured in time. What are seasons? Seasons are periods of time described by an event, a manifestation, a happening, an occurrence, and the frequency of that occurrence. When they say raining season, how does rain falls incessantly? Am I right? Keeps falling. So they say raining. The frequency of the occurrence. The frequency of the occurrence. That's why this year, the frequency of increase in your life is going to be the frequency of the blessings of God upon your life, the increase of God's glory upon your life is going to be alarming. I'm not kidding because it has been declared. Bless the Lord. This time, don't finish. And I, I, I saw a singer held his hand like this, so I know it's time to pack my bags. You know, when an elder looked at, he, he doesn't look at you straight in the eye, but he takes an action. If you're a smart child, if you're an intelligent child, you know that that elder is speaking because action speaks louder than words. Pack your bags. We will continue from here when I have the next opportunity. Praise the Lord. I will surely want to do justice to this. I want to take it to the end. Because there are two circles in a man's life. Amen. The circle of our control and the circle of our concern. We will need to look at that. Yes. Two circles in a man's life. The circle of our control and the circle of our concern. The circle of your control are the things you can do. The circle of your concern are your needs. The circle of your control that enables you achieve your needs. Write it down so that you remind me. The circle of your control and the circle of your concern. And we'll need to know how to manage our time, maximize those, those two circles, and achieve increase. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? I will treat that in the next time I come on board. You need to know how to maximize it and then get increase from it. The power lies within your hand. Rise up to your feet. Would you respect? Did you learn anything today? Were you challenged? Fear me, Lord, till I overflow. Fear me, Lord, till I overflow. Fear me, Lord. Fill my spirit till I overflow. Fill my spirit, fill my spirit till I overflow. Fill me, Lord, fill me, Lord, till I overflow. just one prayer point. Lord help me to respect time from today. Help me to respect time from today. If you are using three hours to do things try to double what you do in three hours. If you are using 30 minutes to wash plates try to wash plates and sweep the floor in 30 minutes. Lord the grace to respect time. The grace to respect time. 
if you used to use one full day to wash clothing alone, try to wash clothes, sweep the floor, and cook food in one full The grace to utilize time effectively. The grace to respect time. If you respect time, you're respecting your life. You're respecting your existence. Lord, help me to respect time. Help me to respect time. Kaya. Some of us, you used to say, I don't have time, I don't have time. So you're the one who have the most time. The reason is because you're not disciplined in your use of time. That's why you think you don't have time. Those who are disciplined in the use of time, always have time. Help me. Help me, oh God, to be disciplined in the use of time. Help me to respect time. Help me to be disciplined in the use of time. Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me, Holy Spirit. Heal me, Lord, till I feel me, Jesus. Feel me, Lord, till I Hallelujah. Feel me, Lord. Feel my overflow. Feel my spirit. Feel my overflow. Feel my spirit, Lord. Feel my spirit. Feel my overflow. Write these action points down. From today, before you go to bed, draw an itinerary for the next day. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? Before you go to bed, sit down when everybody has gone to sleep. And then look at your plan for the next day. Write them down. Number one, number two, number three. And a lot time frame to them all. Sir, yes, you work in an off public office. You can draw an itinerary for yourself and squeeze in the time of Bible study and prayer. Even a time to read a novel, a Christian literature. Draw an itinerary from today. Do it prior the next day. Do it what? Do it what? Prior the next day. Have an itinerary. And when you wake up the following morning, pursue it no matter the distraction. Refuse to give it distraction until you achieve 90% of what you have in your itinerary. And at the end of the day, when you come back before you go to bed, score yourself. 50%, 40%, 20%, 10%, 100%. And then write another one. The ones who couldn't finish this day, take it over. Let your life be disciplined. Let your life be what? Be disciplined. That way, at the end of the day, you will have something to show for your life for your life on earth you have something to show for your existence on earth did you hear what i said did you hear what i said god bless you in the name of jesus